Um, we're going to pick it up in verse 32. But this is the very beginning of Jesus Christ's ministry, obviously. We've just seen that, man, the Lord has like, we're going to pick it up in verse 32, where the whole city gathers together at the city, you know, where the city brings everyone to the house of Jesus to heal, to heal everybody. And uh, we've just seen, just in the very first chapter, we're not even done yet with this, but that, um, where I'm at right now, is that Jesus just had his baptism the, the heavens opened up, man. God proclaimed, this is, my, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. We see immediately the spirit of God forced Christ. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. It says he was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he was forced into the wilderness, right? And to go toe-to-toe with Satan, to go toe-to-toe with Satan and wreck his world, we've seen that. And then um, he, he returns. It says that he was forced and filled with the Holy Spirit, and, the, and it sent him out to the wilderness, but when he was sent by the Holy Spirit, he was filled with the Holy Spirit when he went out to the wilderness, but it says that he returned after he whooped Satan's butt, he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's pretty awesome that once we walk through our trials faithfully, man, we return where you can grow stronger and stronger, man, and that's what God wants us to do, man, you know, but so we see that, we see him preaching, we see him Man, his, his primary ministry is preaching the gospel. Yes, he was healing people. He was casting out demons. He was going into synagogues and preaching with power and authority. And like, man, he has a following, man. And he's like famous now. You know what I'm saying? So now um, he just, this is evening time where we're going to pick up. It's now evening time or the, the day is settling. He just left the synagogue and he, he's going to Simon's house or Simon's mother-in-law's house or someone's house there, right? He's going, sorry, but you know, but it's Simon's house. It is Simon's house, and he immediately heals his, uh, Simon's mother-in-law is sick. He rebuked the, the fever, so now it's, Jesus is chilling, you know what I'm saying? And now, like, he's like, oh, you know, he's just kicking it back, and we're just going to pick it up right now in verse, I'm just going to read verse 32 real quick, so bear with me. Okay, praise God. So verse uh, 32, at evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. Let me just think, that I, just, I was thinking about this for a second. You know, why did they not bring all the sick people? Why did they not bring all the demon-possessed people to the religious leaders of the day? Why did they not bring them to the, uh, to the scribes and the Pharisees? Because there's something about Jesus that they recognize that there's power and authority upon. Man, and that just was making me think of just our church in, in the United States. Forgive me. But, man, there's so many sound churches that have that are good churches, but they're not anointed. The pastors are not filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, they're preaching sound doctrinal sermons, but is your heart leaving on fire, or is it just a good sound doctrinal sermon, man? And I've been praying in my own time and alone with the Lord. I've been pro- I promise you, I've been praying that God would just, and they, some of them, the famous ones, don't even believe in the filling of the Holy Spirit. Doctrines of devils, man. But, man, I'm here to say that the Spirit of God is alive, man. And man, we need, the, we need more than just theology. We need the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts. We need faith to arise, man. And man, probably the, the scribes and the Pharisees, they knew the word better than we do, but not better than Jesus. He is the word, but they, they saw power upon him. They saw authority. Like, he didn't just come and just teach a head knowledge. He just took authority over to the place. I'm like, hey, I'm here for such a time as this, you know? And I just... But, man, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, there's evidence of it, man. Like, there's true evidence of, like, when God allows you to go through hard seasons, but, and it feels like, man, that he's not even with you, but you keep putting one foot in front of the other. You return in the power of the Holy Spirit, and you're drenched with the Holy Spirit. People will see it on you, man. There will be evidence of it, man, with authority and power we need for this time that we're going into. We need more than knowledge, man. We need faith. We need power. We need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is alive. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the Spirit of Christ. He never had a beginning and an end of life. His ministry was not cut off, man. No way. Uh Uh-uh. Take you to Nicaragua with me. I'll show you that. But, like, man. Oh, he's so real. And I don't, woo. (laughs) All right, we're going to pick up verses uh, 36. Sorry, uh, where am I at? 33 and 34. Oh, thank you, Lord. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. (laughs) Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew who he was. So check this out. Like you, 
Oh, the Lord gave me something for us. The Lord gave me something right here for this. The whole, the, it's dark, right? It's dark, it's a Sabbath and all that. So, man, Jesus just ministered all day, right? He just left the synagogue. He pre, he's probably preaching all day, walking, you know, and going to the synagogue and preaching again and probably definitely healing, healing people and giving counsel, all of these different things. And ministry will wear you out, man. It really will. It really will. But so he's probably, Jesus, you know, he's God, but he's a man, and he's probably kicking it back like, oh, it's time to chill, man. And then uh, all of a sudden you got donk, donk, donk at the door. You're like, man, I wonder who this is, you know? So he opens the door, and the whole city is there. It says the whole city. They brought everyone to him who is sick and demon-possessed. And if you're anything like me, then I'd be like, hey, y'all, it's, it's late. Y'all tripping. I'm going to bed. Get up on out of here. But, you know, what about you when you get that text message or that phone call from that difficult brother? Or that difficult sister, man, you're like, man, they tripping. I, I ain't answering this phone. You know what I'm saying? But like, man, you're like, I click, yeah, I'm asleep. But, you know, but let me tell you something, man. Let me be honest with you. That's wrong. That is, I'm guilty of it, and you're guilty of it. <laughs> I'm really guilty of it. But, man, like, <laughs> man, when you're tired, you're tired. You know, after working all day, man, like, this, this dude's tripping. But the thing is, is that, it is wrong, man, because this, this could be your brother and sister in Christ. More than likely, it's your brother and sister in Christ that's like, that could be in a crisis. And I, the only one that I've seen do this faithfully is my wife, Nikel. I'm like, yeah, baby, I'm, I'm going to go to bed. But, but I'm just like, this could be a crisis, man, for your brother and sister in Christ. They go, they're probably facing a crisis. They need somebody. You don't know what's going on with them. Even more, this could be your a lost family member or a lost friend that God is dealing with. And I'm thinking about my, uh, my brother Zach over here, our friend Owen, uh, when his mom passed away, he called me up. Owen, tough guy, like crazy dude, and um, really out there. But he called me up, and he's like freaking out. He's like, Jay, I want to die, blah, 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 blah. And like he was going through that, and like praise God that, you know, I had a chance to talk to him. Zach's been talking to him. You know, the Lord still praying for him. But what I'm saying is we got to, the Lord is saying for us, that we need to be interruptible. That, that's the whole thing, man. We got, if, especially if you're called to ministry, but if you're a Christian, we're all called to ministry. We're all called to do something. We, we're all called to be a witness, and we have to be interruptible. And the Lord is not afraid to inconvenience your day. The Lord will bring lost family members. The Lord will bring lost people across your, across your day, across your path, and he doesn't even care about interrupting your time. Because let me remind you of something, that God cares about people. Jesus Christ cares about people. And want to know something that's going on, man, is that so many times we're so focused on our daily regimen, right, in the United States. You know, in this country, you're always in a hurry. We're always frantic, you know. But the Lord is like, he... Man, like the Lord doesn't care about that. But what I'm saying is that we're so focused on getting through our day, we got to get all these different things done, and we're not even aware. We're not even like focused. And I'm so guilty of it. But, you know, we're not even focused about what's going on, about lost souls. And the Lord, so many times, he'll, man, he'll bring that person right along your path to kind of like interrupt you. And the Lord is bringing that person to you because you have the answer for their eternal destiny. Man, and the Lord cares about people and want to know something, what's going on. And I believe the Lord showed me this yesterday, is that when we're, you know, when God brings that person across your path, I believe right now, like, I believe God, like, will be probing your heart, probing your heart, you know what I mean? And all of heaven is viewing down, and they're just, it's like a showdown. Oh, is my daughter going to open her mouth? Is my son going to open her mouth? And I could just see the angels, come on, come on, say it, witness, please, you know? It's like a showdown that's going on, man. And how many times have, have I been so guilty of just like being in a hurry or tired? You know what I'm saying? And how many divine appointments have I wasted? How many divine appointments have you wasted being tired, being in a hurry? Man, I'm guilty of it. You're guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. You know, and the thing is that the Lord has been showing me that, we need, that he wants us just like Jesus, like he worked from a, pace, a place of rest. He was busy. Let me tell you something. If there's anything you read in Mark, it's like boom, boom, boom. He's busy. He's always on the go. And, um, but the Lord, but Jesus took authority over the time. He took authority. He owned it. He made the best use of his time, and, and, and so should we. But we need to work from a place of rest, and we can work from rest 
and we can have a busy day and still be in rest. But how do we do that? It's being satisfied. It really is, man. It's being satisfied in the Father. It's being satisfied in the Son. It's being satisfied in the Holy Spirit. And when you're satisfied with the presence of God, and when you're focused on God, man, like you can, you can work from rest and get a lot more done. I, I've noticed that so much, man. Like so many times I could just be really busy and I'm just focused. But when I'm like, when I'm satisfied with the Lord, I'm way more f uh, productive and effective and I get more done, and yet there's opportunity here, a little bit here. You know, kind of just working from a place of rest, even in the midst of busyness. Man, that is awesome. And the Lord is saying that um, he wants us, just as we're created in the image of God, right? God possesses eternity. Like, God, like, takes eternity and just bends it wherever he wants. He's like, yeah, go over here. Like, he owns eternity. And the thing is, we're created in the image of God. And like in the same way that God wants us to take authority over our time by his grace and own it and make the best use of it. You know what I mean? Like we don't have to be bound by time and like, like you see so many people are. Like we can walk on it. We can take authority over it. Not that crazy, weird authority, but I'm talking like we don't have to be bound by time and so frantic and, and anxious over it that we can really walk with it and own it. You know what I'm saying? We can... But that is working from a place of rest, you know? But let's, let's move on because I know that the Lord wants to say some more here. Okay, at verse 32. Praise you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In the evening, okay, hold on, sorry. Yeah, 35, right? 35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. There he prayed. So what do we see here? We see that the whole city shows up at Jesus' door after the sun is set. So did he get any sleep? Like me at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> but, like, but like, did he get any sleep at all? You know, I mean, it doesn't show. Like, the scripture's not telling us how long he witnessed to, how, you know, how long he ministered for. Did he sleep at all? Did he? I don't know. But we do know this, that he woke up, and he went and prayed a long while before it was daylight. Though Jesus Christ is God, very God, capital G, he became a man, and like, if, and he is our example. And he knew, Jesus Christ knew for certain that he needed to maintain his prayer life that he, so, that he, so that he would maintain the anointing and the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit upon his life. Jesus, man, we, and you read the whole book. If you read the whole book of Luke, there's two contexts in the book of Luke. There's two main things that stick out in the book, in the book of Luke, the book, the book of Luke. It's two things, prayer and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. If you study the book of Luke, you'll see a consistency with prayer and the Holy Spirit, man. And that's what the, the Lord Jesus is showing us that, man, like, if he needed prayers, I, Jason White desperately needs prayer. You desperately need prayer. And that we're only as strong as our prayer life. And I praise God for the word of God, but the word of God is, a point, is to point us to the living God because he is, like I said, he's more than a theology. He, he, he loves you. He wants to fellowship with you. And you and I, man, that's, that's our source of life. That's our only source right there. That's our only connection. It's like I, I said this before. I felt like the Lord showed me that like prayer is that spiritual fuel line, right? You know, that we can get fed, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit. And man, I'm telling you, that's our only source of life and authority. And that's so we can live in this crazy world and, and work from rest. Like prayer is the key to work from rest, you know? And like, man, it talked about in the morning time. And I just felt like the Lord wanted to say this, but in the morning times, most, most mornings, I, I do, I get up. And I go for a prayer walk before, before, uh, before the sun rises. And I go for a prayer walk because if I was to fall on my knees, I'd go to sleep. But I go on a prayer walk, and it helps me to wake up. And I go on a prayer walk for like 30, 40 minutes every morning by the grace of God. And, it, and it, it's just a sweet time. But what I'm saying is like, but, I, but I, also, I always make it a practice. You know, Nikkel and I both, 
we pray at night. And for me, you know, praise God in the mornings, it's that, <clears throat> it's sweet. Think about this in the mornings, though. Like, everyone's sound asleep in their bed, and you got the eyes of God just scanning the landscape, and he's searching, like, who wants to hang out? Everyone is just sleeping, but then you pop up, and his eyes are fixed on you, and you get his full attention in the morning. Man, that's sweet, man. That's awesome. But, like, but I think we need to give God our, our best, and I think, you know, in the mornings, obviously, is very important, but at the same time, like, I want to give God my best, and when, when I'm most awake, when my, when my mind is most quickened, is at night, and my prayers are more fiery at night, I'm more awake at night, I, I, I break through at night, I can just feel it, I can't explain it, like, night's my time, but I do seek him in the morning, and I really think that we shouldn't just seek him in the morning, and that's it, and then that's it, and then that's it, and that's it. Like, he's our source. He's our life. We need him. He's your only hope. He's your only, man, that's your source of power. That's your source of faith. That's your source of life. That's what's going to keep you to endure to the end. We need to pray. We have to pray. We have to seek him, especially for such a time as this. You know, and like, man, like for even just for your own protection, man, I can't tell you when my wife and I were living in Nicaragua, how many times, you can ask Nikkel, just sisters, pull her aside and ask her, but how many times did God speak to us, like in our prayer life? Because <clears throat> going on mission trips is like nice and all, but when you move to somewhere, like you don't know who to trust, you don't know what's going on, it's crazy. But I can't tell you how many times the Holy Spirit spoke to us and protected us and warned us about different people, and showed us who we can trust, and showed us, showed us who we can't trust, and, and, and revealing different things that no one knows about the certain person, but God, and God revealed it to us. It's so crazy, but the Holy, what I'm saying is he's alive. He's alive, and he wants you. He desires you, and what, one thing that God has been showing me and telling me, and this may sound crazy, but I'm not trying to be some weird Christian or wacko Christian, but everything in the Bible is for you. Everything in the Bible is for you. Man, like, just be, you know, there's, God shows no favoritisms, does he not? You know, God used his disciples in, to do amazing things. He'll do it for you. God, in church history, we see God using men and women to do great things. He'll do it for you. He's a rewarder for what? For those who, what? Diligently seek him. But do we, diligently, do we diligently seek him? Are we breaking through? Are we prevailing in prayer? Are we walking in a way that pleases him? Are we walking in repentance? Are we walking in victory? When you do fall, like we all do, are we quick to repent and get back to the cross? You know, walk in the light. It talks about walking in the light. That's being confessional. It's being humble enough to like, dude, hold me accountable, bro. You know? But man, we need one another so desperately. But prayer is our main connection, man. And the Lord has it all for you. He wants to fill you. He wants to use you. I'm telling you, like for me, you know, I've been begging God just recently. The Lord has put fresh faith in my heart and fresh faith in my mind and just reminded me of the things in the past. And when I'm reading the book of Revelation, I'm in my own personal time. And just what I'm, what I'm saying is that the Lord has done amazing things for me in the past. And it's for, by his grace and glory. But I'm sure he's done that for many of you. I've been praying diligently screaming at the gates of heaven, Lord, baptize me in the Holy Spirit again. Like I've been filled with the Holy Spirit several different times. I've, have re I've had, I did receive the filling and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. My wife has, she, she was doing homework. The Spirit of God fell on the kel, baptized her in the Holy Spirit. I was seeking the Lord one morning, just complaining. The Spirit of God fell on me for like several minutes, just like a wind, and I was encouraged, and just, in other different times, the Lord filled me with the Holy Spirit, but why am I, am I, I'm not satisfied, I want more, you know what I mean, and Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit, stronger than ever, fill me with the Holy Spirit for three days straight, Lord, come on, you know, guess what, also, I re, by the grace of God, you know, and I have received prophetic dreams and visions from the Lord, but I want more, I want, I want everything that God wants for me, I want it, dude. And I'm not going to let nobody take it from me because it's for me. It's for you. I mean, and God wants to do that for you. He wants to do that for us, especially for such a time as this. You know what I mean? So many Christians are at their knees because of this thing. Man, we have the hope, man. The Lord, I understand being wise and prudent, but don't give in to fear, man. You know, but the Lord has so much for us, man. Man, even more, Lord, show me your glory. I want to see heaven. I'm like asking God for crazy things. 
Why? Man, because God, he's rewarded for those who diligently seek him. Lord, you said it, Lord. Come on. Man, I want more. I want more. I'm not satisfied with that. That's old manna. I want new manna, Lord. You know, and he wants that for you. He wants that for me. And don't let no, don't let no TV preacher or whatever radio guy tell you that's not for you. It's a lie, man. Is that not like Satan to steal you from the power of God, to rob you from the fillings of the Holy Spirit, to keep you incapacitated? Man, the, the Lord has, man, he wants to give you his fullness, man. But we got to be persistent. We just can't make, we can't like so many, forgive me, man, but a lot of Christians, they have these little devotionals, right? Like five, 10 minute devotionals. And they read it. Oh, I had my time with the Lord. Nah, dude, you're being, you're being robbed. But God, man, we got to seek him in secret. Man, you know what they talked about in the old, the old men and old women that God used in the past where God shook this world with these men and women? It was a sweet hour of prayer, they used to call it. Sweet hour of prayer. They'd always give God their first hour in prayer. And then they'd go to the word, you know, or vice versa. They'd start in the word and go to prayer. It doesn't matter, whatever you like. But, man, we got to give God our first hour, man. Man, the Lord talks about he'll spit out the lukewarm Christians, man. Come on, man. we got to get to know him now. Now is the time to know him, man. Amen? Mm. Amen. I still got time. All right, guys. Um, yeah, verses 36 through 39. Ah, Father, come. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And when they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you. But he said to them, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also. Because for this, pe- because for this purpose, I have come forth. And he was preaching in the synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. I could just picture this, guys. Holy Spirit. That's all. That's all. You guys can shut your Bibles if you want to. But I'm going to close here shortly. But we see. So Jesus, we see, what's the picture? I mean, all, all his disciples, Simon and a few of the disciples, they're running to Jesus. And he's just, I don't know if he's just bending up off his knee. I don't know, what's, I don't know what the picture looks like. But they're like, Jesus, what are you doing out here? Because he, it seems like he left the town. It's like he got away from, and that's a picture for you and me. Jesus went to a solitary place. You know, I, me, like, you can ask my wife, I hate being distracted when I seek the Lord. Like, I get in the flesh, dude. I'm like, <laughs> but, like, that's just a weakness of me. I need to be more patient. Not with Nikel. I'm just saying there could be phone or whatever. But, um, but Jesus went to a solitary place to, be, to get away from distractions, from temptations, from da- Pastor Dan's favorite thing in the world, his cell phone, Right? No, but like, you just think about, man, just put your, you don't need your cell phone when you seek the Lord. You can just put that thing away, I'm telling you, dude. But Jesus went to a solitary place and he was praying. And then morning came and it looked like his, you know, Simon and a few of his disciples, they ran to him. And they're like, Jesus, what are you doing here, man? Like, there's still more Sikh people over there. Man, people are waiting for you, Lord. Do you not even care about these people? Dude, let me tell you something. No one cares more about people than Jesus Christ. But like, but Jesus Christ, like, you look at his response. He says, I need to go to the next towns and start preaching. For this purpose, I come forth. It's not, it's not that Jesus didn't care about the people, but Jesus Christ was laser focused on one thing, to getting the people reconciled to the Father. Jesus Christ was focused on one thing. He had one top, top, top priority and is the preaching to the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who need it to those who have not yet heard it you know it's not that Jesus didn't care about the sick the demon possessed he didn't you know it's not like he didn't care about the people who were desperately afflicted he did care about them but he was laser focused on the most important need because he knew that time was running out and every day people are dropping in hell so he literally met their most critical need, which was giving them the gospel of Jesus Christ. He gave them the gospel. It's not like he didn't care, but there's a greater need, man. There's a greater need. Man, the time is clicking. Death and hell are moving. And Jesus Christ understood that. He was laser focused on getting the gospel of Jesus Christ out. And ready for this one? Jesus Christ was laser focused on explaining how to become reconciled with the Father. He wasn't just... Like, he took his time. 
He did, but then he would depart. And Jesus Christ was always on the move. I would rarely see him just placed in one spot. You know, he was constantly on the move, constantly preaching the gospel. Yeah, with the preaching of the gospel, you will come across those who are demon-possessed. You will come across those who need healing. And I bet when we, when we actually step out in faith, I bet we will see that more and more. You know, I've seen it. Others here have seen that stuff. But it's not about that. It's about preaching the gospel. It's about meeting the people's most critical needs. Jesus cared about the people, but man, he had to keep going because time is running out. And he knew that time is running out. You know, it says, you know, work while there's still day because night's coming when no man will work. But now is the time. And that is, that is specifically for us. Brothers and sisters, for such a time as this, man, God, we are here you're appointed by God to, to live in this day and age. So it's, this is not a time to buckle. This is not a time to buckle to fear and buckle to everything that's going on. In my opinion, I don't believe this is like the tribulation. Other people are saying that this is the start of the tribulation period. Honestly, there's, in Scripture, it's not. We don't see the peace treaty. We don't see all that happening right away. We, um, the, the temple in Jerusalem is not erected yet. There's so much more than that. But what, but what I'm saying, this is from the Lord. Like, God allowed this. He's not asleep on his throne with this whole coronavirus. He's not like, oh, chained up, like, oh, my gosh. Oh, man, what am I going to do? Like, Jesus, man, he allows this stuff to happen. He's, allow, he, he's allowing it to go through the world. Really, I believe, to wake up the church. <laughs> he wants to revive the church, man. We're so content to... The church is content to live without revival, it seems like. We're just, okay, we're fine. But the Lord wants to revive us. The Lord wants us to be awakened. And I'm telling you that, that we have the antidote. Listen, we have the antidote, right? I'm going to read you the antidote for, uh, for this virus. You guys ready? Psalm 91, man. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm just looking, going to look at verse 5. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your, at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. For those who make the Lord God most high their dwelling place, for those who hide themselves in the shadow of the Almighty. Man, we can go. God is, I believe, honestly, this is a time for the church to rise up. It's not a time for the church to sit and, you know, hide underneath the couch right now. Think about, you know, the book of Acts. You know, if the coronavirus broke out in the book of Acts, I don't think, you know, the apostles are going to be sitting and doing nothing. I think they're going to be wise. They're going to be prudent, you know what I mean? Especially those with kids, yeah. I believe we need to be wise. We need to be prudent. But we should not be buckled in fear. I believe the Lord is saying, church, rise up, man. Rise up. If you take that step of faith, I will meet you. I will use you. I will encounter you. I will embrace you. I will use you. And don't worry about the coronavirus, man. Man, I've given you the antidote. The Holy Spirit, burn it out, man. I'm here to tell you, man, God is alive, and he wants us to go and preach the gospel. You know what? And lay hands on the sick. Lay hands on. Who cares? Rebuke it in the authority of Jesus Christ. I'm not saying be some weirdo. I'm not talking about wacko Christianity. I'm talking about biblical Christianity, walking in wisdom, walking in prudence. If you have kids, man, all of that. But for, for us, man, we need to sound the trumpet. This is a sign. This is a sign for what's coming, man. And the Lord wants us to shine now, man, for such a time as this. And I'm here to, t I'm, the Holy Spirit I felt like was witnessing to me last night. And I feel like the Lord has given us a word. Like this isn't the tribulation right now. But I'm here to tell you, we are coming into the last hour. It is short. Time is short. And the Holy Spirit was saying to me, live stream, listen. But the Holy Spirit is saying, men, get your house in order. Feed your family with the word of God. Get them ready for what's coming because what's coming is going to be a lot worse than this coronavirus. Man, and I'm saying also for you to, get, to build up your faith for what's coming because those who endure to the end will be saved, okay? It is what it is. That's what the word says. That's what Jesus says. But man, we need to build up faith for such a time as this, man. We need to have faith in our hearts so that our hearts are not failing. People want to see hope. Man, like people are frantic right now. People are running all over the place like chickens with their head cut off, giving, you know, all just they're going crazy. I, I mean, I've been working a lot and it's, it is what it is, man. People are going crazy, but when they see you, like, dude, how are you so calm, dude? Like, what is that about you, man? It's Jesus, dude. He's got me. But let me tell you something. He wants to take you under his wings too. 
you know, but man, that, that's what the Lord is doing. He wants to bring an awakening because, man, death is coming to all men, man. It is what it is. We're going to die one day. Man, and I want us to live. Get, I want to live like on fire for God. And man, I, I'm tired of being held back. I'm tired of being just chained, you know, by even, forgive me, but just other Christians. I'm like, man, get, get off me, man. Like, I want to run. Man, I want to live, man. I want to die with glory, God. I, I mean, this time is so short. You know, and like, man, God, God, he has so much for you. And he talks about, you know, um, you know, he's going to pour out a spirit on all flesh, right? We, we talk about, you know, the beginning, the, we have the beginning and latter rain. You know, in the first, he poured out his Holy Spirit on 120 people. But then he's like, no, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon the whole earth. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh, man. And now the Lord is saying we need to align our hearts, you know, for that. We need to align our lives to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, he says, go into the city and wait until you are dude with power from on high. Man, the Lord has so much more. He wants to use us in this season, man. He wants to use you in this season. Man, don't be robbed. Man, God has allowed this for you to arise up, man. I'm telling you. He wants the church to arise up. Yeah, be wise. Be prudent. Obviously, in Proverbs says, I, wisdom, dr dwell with prudence. We need wisdom. We need prudence. But we, ne we need not fear. We don't need to let this thing buckle us, man. Amen? I love y'all. Oh, this is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you and all I have within me I give you praise and all that I adore is in you Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way. Oh, this is my desire to honor you with all my heart, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you, Jesus, all I have within I give you praise, all that I adore, all that I adore is in you. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. Yes, I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Jesus, live for you. Every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you, my one. 
Father, we close this service tonight with this song to you in light of what we're facing right now, Lord. May these truths become more real than ever in our hearts, Lord. Would you just illuminate the truth of your word as expressed in this song, Lord, from Psalm 23. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In green pastures he makes me lie down. He restores my soul, leads me on for his name, for his great name. Surely goodness, surely mercy. Surely goodness, surely mercy, right beside me all my days, and I will dwell in your house forever, and bless your holy name. You 
prepare a table right before me in the presence of my enemies though the arrow flies and the terror of the virus is at my door i'll trust you lord surely goodness surely mercy right beside me all days and I will dwell in your house forever and bless your holy name we sing to you surely goodness surely mercy right beside me all the shadow of death and I will fear no evil even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death you are on my side tonight even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death and I will fear no evil, no, no. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are on my side. Surely goodness, surely mercy, Right beside me all my days, and I will dwell in your house forever, and bless your holy name, surely goodness, surely mercy. Right beside me all my days, and I will dwell in your house forever, and bless your holy name. We bless your holy name, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Bless your name. Take these last few moments just between you and the Lord, just declaring your trust, calling upon his name for help letting out a statement of praise here in the building, at home. Lord, we trust in you.
We will speak your praises, O oh God. Even though we walk, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and I will fear no evil of any kind because my eyes are on you, but walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are on my side, I know you are God. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and I will fear no evil. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are on my side. Surely goodness. Surely mercy right beside me all my days, and I will dwell in your house forever and bless your holy name. We worship you, Lord shepherd of our souls. What a wonderful God you are. What a faithful high priest. What a wonderful counselor. Thank you, Lord. What an anchor for our souls. What a shelter. I just come to you Lord, as we close off this time, thank you for your presence, Lord, in our homes. Thank you for our presence as we go about our day and night, Lord. We lift up everyone who's joining us by live stream, Lord, that you would strengthen their hearts. Oh, Lord, don't let them fear or complain or lose heart, Lord. This is the time to confidently look to you and worship you and quiet down our busy lives and lean into what you're going to do through this, Lord. You've sovereignly allowed this into our lives. So there's something good here. Don't let us miss it. Don't let us get ahead of you, Lord. Don't let us act in fear or speak in fear or in a critical uh, nature of each other, Lord, or of others. But to just Build each other up. Support each other. Find ways to help practically uh, one another, Lord. What does that look like? What does that even mean, Lord? We pray you'd grant us wisdom, put color to it so we know what we should do, Lord, for one another. And Lord, please use us in our community. Please use us. We do not want to waste this virus, this time of, like, required quiet down. We want to just use this to point people to you, Lord, and to speak truth into people's lives. So show us. We thank you, Lord. We worship you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And for those that are live stream and for those that are in the building, we will continue having our services Wednesday nights, future Wednesdays, and Sunday morning, 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m. We have no idea how long you know, this modified service will go on, but we'll keep doing this until there's a point where we can't do this anymore. We'll do something. So the word will still be going out and we'll still worship him. But for now, we are able to meet in a, in a way that uh, complies with the guidance of the CDC and that allows us to take care of those who are single in our body that don't have the, uh, the blessing of families right by. So we'll see you Sunday morning, 9 o'clock on live stream or here in the building, and we'll see you at 10.30 as well. Amen.